Good evening, everyone. This is Mike Wilson, uh, brought to you by Andesite Blue. Uh, we are going to be talking about business and finance in Ukraine. A little bit changed, not finance. And uh, at this point, we're talking a lot about uh, what's going on uh, currently in Ukraine with the war, what we can do to help, how we get involved uh, to, you know, through donations, through uh, volunteer, uh, just the different aspects of what is needed and necessary. Uh, I have a special guest tonight I'm going to be introducing to you in a little bit. But you're probably wondering why I am dressed in this. Uh, I've had the privilege and the opportunity to uh, begin training again to the military. I'm working with probably an 80 percent of the soldiers that are civilian that have no military background. So I am doing a fast track and getting them engaged with their weapons, with uh, just understanding orders, understanding coercion, working together as a team. Uh, it's just it's, it's such a transition going from being a civilian to being military. Uh, I was joined the military back in when I was, well, a long time ago, when I was 18 years old. And so I've had that training and I've programmed in my head for, since I was a young adult and then all my life I've been able to, you know, keep a lot of the disciplines that it has provided in my life. <clears throat> but to be able to do that for young people in the middle of war is not that easy. Uh, they, their, their minds aren't thinking that. They're, yes, they want to help. Yes, they want to defend Ukraine. They want to defend their families. Uh, they uh, absolutely abhor this atrocity that's going on right now. They abhor the fact that another country, Russia, has come in and invaded, uh, fully invaded. I mean, the war has been going since 2014, but this uh, has become an absolute um, disaster in uh, what, what Russia is doing. But our defenders are uh, doing an amazing job. The volunteers that are coming in from all over the world to, to help. Uh, I have friends that are from Britain, from France, from Sweden, from Finland, from the U.S., uh, from Australia, from, from many, many countries that, are, that have come here to help, uh, even from the Middle East. Uh, soldiers that have experience have come in here to help, and I'm really proud of them. I'm thankful for them coming in here. Uh, some of them are training, like myself, uh, to, to help and to get these men re you know, really geared up and ready. We've got young men, we've got middle-aged men, we've got men and, you know, my age that have actually come in to uh, fight and, you know, to defend Ukraine. So it is a big task. Uh, I'm, again, I'm honored uh, and proud to be able to help. I mean, Ukraine is my love and my passion. It's my home. You know, I've lived here for three years. I've been working with them since 2015. I came be when it was peacetime uh, back in 2012. And so the hit my history with Ukraine has, has gone back a, a while. And I definitely have a very uh, affection and, and love for Ukraine. So uh, today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about, uh, well, some videography, some, uh, some 3D equipment, or 360 degree equipment, excuse me. Uh, um, some panoramic uh, views and, and also high quality, which we're talking 8K, 11K, and up in the um, uh, camera quality. Uh, this uh, is going to do a lot of uh, help and to establishing, you know, the, the damage that's been done to assess a cost and uh, evaluate the economic, um, you know, pressure that's been put on Ukraine through these uh, videos and photographs and also uh, for the war crimes that are, are going on. So um, what I'd like to do right now is take a moment and introduce to you uh, Nikolai. Uh, he is our guest this evening. So Nikolai, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we actually have a common friend that uh, we've known for, uh, for a while that actually enter introduced us, but uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. I'm intrigued with what you do. Uh, it's definitely needed. So why don't you just introduce yourself, uh, take a little bit of time and talk about what you do and tell me what you did before the before the war. You know how this kind of segued into into the war. Thank you, Mike. Uh, my name is Nikolai Amelchenko, and I'm from Ukraine. Um, it is a pleasure to be here and to share the story and the activities that we do at the moment. Uh, back early in uh, two th back early in 2000, I started a travel company, but the company that was incoming service providing, not out not outgoing, mm -hmm. but incoming. 
And my passion was, how can I show, how can I explain to the foreigners, people that want to come, the beauty of Ukraine? And Ukraine is a beautiful yes. country. Yes, it is. So many cities, so many sites, historical sites, so Asian sites. Mm -hmm. Some will blow your mind that some places are over a thousand years old. Um, and so I was looking for all the ways I, I can I can show that. You know, the printing brochure doesn't really show. Mm -hmm. you, you send a mail, you send a picture. It doesn't give you the full experience of what's going on. So I've, I've dipped in and said, let's let's find that something new. At that time, I started hearing about the 360 panoramic pictures that was just coming up. It was about 2015, 2016. And I realized that in other countries, in the U.S. and in the States, the street view, and in Europe, the street view is already there. The 360 panoramic Correct. pictures yeah, that's right. are on the maps, in, but not in Ukraine. So, uh, you know, the, the official Google did the street view in 2011, 2015, but there was no panoramics. There was no uh, virtual uh, Google tours. So I asked Google why there's no one there. And they said, well, we have no one yet applied for and passed the exam. Yeah, yes, at that time, you have to pass the exam. Okay. You have to do the training, do the test, and then they'll give you the certification. Well, I got it. So I was the first certified Google photographer for Ukraine. Wow, that's fantastic. And that's, yeah. Thank you. And that became not only the work, but it became lifestyle. Uh, every time I take a picture, a 360 picture, is I have a thought in my mind. How do I want to show to the world, to my family, to my children, mm -hmm. the things I've seen? Because uh, with this work, I was able to get at places that people normally don't get into. One of the projects was uh, in of Chernobyl. I mm, was okay. standing inside the fourth reactor that uh, the explosion took place. I was standing on the base of the third reactor that's still active with all the mm -hmm. um, things inside there and was taking panoramic pictures. Now, you can go and Google and, and just uh, drop Click on a, it a pig man okay. on, the, on the area of Chernobyl and you'll find my panoramics um, picture. So, with that work, the places I travel are just amazed. You know, other uh, source of work that I did uh, is um, the castles of Ukraine. Oh, yes. Beautiful. I, I need to go. I haven't. That's one of the things I want to do and I haven't done yet. Yes, please do. Um, and I can advise you because sometimes the most famous castle is not as great and historically interesting as the one you never heard of. I wasn't one that you just walk in and you can be lost there for for hours and hours and hours. And you just you just you want to feel the history, mm -hmm. right? feel yes, the, yeah. the experience that's there. Uh, we also did the natural parks of Ukraine. Is, you know, people know about the parks, but they do not know uh, where is the well or where is the, uh, the place they can rest. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like a, maybe a, a castle or maybe a big rock that's interesting for them. So we capture all of that to show the beauty of Ukraine. And it's, as I said, it's been my passion and lifestyle that I was doing it. So when the war started, um, how can I help? What can I do? Mm -hmm. I do not have any military background. Uh, at all, I uh, have no no training, but I do know about 360 pictures. Uh, now, with with 360, I uh, use the um, high quality Canon camera with fish eye that will create a panoramic picture right. okay. when, when you stand. Now, I have a drone that will, can fly and can take 360 pictures, air panels. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have a, a camera that will provide a street view. Now, at this moment, I have a just a sample of a little tiny camera. Okay. Uh, that only provides 8K. Um, the one that I have for the 11K didn't bring. Uh, it's big and huge one. So it was heavier, yes. Uh, yeah. Not much heavier. But even this small one uh, has uh, six lenses that will capture everything at the very second, all 360 around you. Wow, okay. And uh, with, the, with the quality of 8K and 11K, and um, you can see the details. If the camera, there, there are so many cameras. I've been to the Google Summits in San Francisco and Tokyo. Uh, in um, in London, I was a speaker mm -hmm. there. Um, I was doing a project uh, with a team um, in Zanzibar. Uh, government of Zanzibar asked us, "How can we do a street view? How can we show the beautiful uh, island we have to the, the world?" Because they have not had any street view whatsoever. Okay. So we got a team. We um, went there and we uh, helped them to capture a whole island. Now you can go on Google. You can. Drop a big man, and you can see the roads. You can see the beauty wow, of the hotels, okay, yes. etc. Now, but the, we did not only go there. 
we trained local people and we had a sponsor insta camera which is this is again an insta 360 okay uh, that have we left the cameras with them so they can continue the work after we're done i mean you can do this with this camera you can do a, st a standard pictures uh again 360 to show maybe the caves that we did not see before or mm -hmm. maybe the sites that we have not reached by car but the locals know everything about their island so yes, um, yes, yes. so i have great experience in that and so I, I just wanted to bring my experience to help ukraine and help the whole world to understand the reality because sometimes even right now russian says oh you're bombing yourself or you tell us the lie there's not much destruction there's not much to, it, it, it's it's a fake now with the street view with the open maps that we can publish this this uh, pictures and uh, this data later, everyone can see it with the click of the of the button. Correct, uh, correct. Of the button. You can go on your phone on your computer and you can travel and walk around the places that've been destroyed. Um, recently, we visited uh, Irpin, Bucha, mm -hmm, yes. Makariv, Borodyanka, and it's I mean it's blow, it will blow your mind what's there. It's Just absolutely, a, yeah. uh, cities are destroyed. Now, there's one village we drove by on the way from one location to another location called Andriivka. Uh, and I did share a link with you. You can share the video mm -hmm. of, that, of that little village. There's not even one house that has not been bombed or shot. Not so every one. home has been Every over. home, and there's like maybe 20% that are still walls. The rest is just just flat. Wow. It's, wow. it's, it's, a, it's a disaster. So we want to show everyone that, that the war is real and that Russia had brought so much damage and so much sorrow and, and sadness to this country. Yeah, that, and, that, and we, you know, those are the kind of same things that we need and we appreciate uh, to be able to get that out, you know, to get the, and the imagery you're talking about, I'm a photographer, but amateur photographer. Uh, so I'm very, very basic and I'm still shots, I'm not video. Um, but I, I love the, you know, what you can pick up. I love art. I love abstracts. I love di different things, that, you know, lighting, different, di different things that are involved in, in photography. And, of course, when I uh, take photography here in Ukraine, you know, I don't use filters. I want to use the nat what you see. And so, I, you know, I want to bring that out, and I want to bring it out as if, as, as if you're there when you're taking those uh, photo uh, photographs. And I remember my first digital camera. Uh, I believe it was four meg, uh, maybe six meg, you know, and so you, if you look at the picture from a distance, it looked all there. But the moment you tried to zoom in on it, it was super pixelated. I mean, big squares, right? <laughs> and of course, then they came out with the eight meg, then the 12 meg, and then I got the uh, Nikon uh, 21 meg, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so the, the Clarity was just, you know, much better, you know, so was, that kept improving and, and kept improving. Now you're talking 8K and 11K, and 11K you mm. know. Now Meg is, uh, is smaller in pixelation than K, but K is a different meaning. Right, right. Uh, it gives you clear uh, sight. And uh, like this camera would be probably uh, the lowest camera I would use for the pictures and street view. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you can still see the details, but not as much as 11K with another Insta Titan. It's called Insta Titan 360. Okay. Uh, with that camera, you can keep zooming. Just keep zooming. Without losing that uh, right. integrity. Yes, right. and that's in, important, in, though, for exactly, what you're doing. Exactly, because what we do is we, we capture the evidence of the war. Mm -hmm. uh, till, and then, of course, the size of the, of the data is, is extremely big. At this moment, just uh, in a few days of drive, we have captured over two terabytes of data. Two terabytes of data. I mean, each like each lens has their own uh, chip there. Uh, the card, which is about two hundred fifty-six uh, megabyte of card, mm -hmm. uh, or gigabyte of card, and uh, then you you pull them together, you stitch them together, and you create the panorama picture. Now, the panorama picture, the, the the smallest one I have would be probably about thirty-four, thirty-five megabyte, and I can increase the picture if I need to one gigabyte. 
if I have to. So the clarity is, is great, and you can really see the details, and that's what we're after for. Because uh, everyone is a photographer. Right now with the technology, yeah, you, take, exactly. you take your phone, you, you just snap. <laughs> Everyone's a self exactly. selfie photographer. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then with the phone, you, just, you, you can capture one thing. With 360, you can immerse yourself in, inside, inside what, the, what it mm -hmm. is. Now, every picture that we, that we do, the 360 picture, can be turned to the VR. So you, you, you put your glasses on, you put your phone on, oh. you, you get the link, mm -hmm. and you can be you're viewing this. You just got to turn around. Yeah. You can turn yeah. around. Um, you don't have to even move. I mean, when, when you, when you um, put your eyes on the arrow, it will take another second, and it will move you to another location, and, and you're there. Okay. So you can experience yourself standing inside of a broken home, or you can stand inside of uh, near the, uh, the burn Russian tanks, mm -hmm. and you see what it is in reality. Um, so, yeah, the quality and the immersive experience is what we're after for. Sure. Now, sure. Um, yeah, as I said, there are cameras that are lower in this that will, will give you like a 4K, uh, still about 5.6K, uh, and the gray cameras. But they're great for the Facebook. You know, oh, this, this is what we were, this is what we did. Now, for the easier to upload because right. it's less uh, easy. Yeah. It's from the phone, you can upload. I mean, can you can even take it through 60 with, with, your, with your phone. Sure. There's an app that you can, you can do that. But that will, that, that those pictures will have cuts, it will not have clear view. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's where in the 2016, uh, Google was training us like, you have to have the quality. If it was one stitching problem on the panoramic, that's not good. So you okay, have to be wow. the best. You have to be yeah. good. Uh, unfortunately, this rule has gone, has been, has vanished. So anyone with a camera lower even does this or other will be able to do it. But we ask people at the moment to please, you know, use the quality camera, quality um, equipment to capture. Because mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. thing is every picture will, will be stored and will be viewed by people. And, and we do not want to give anyone a chance Oh, I didn't see the destruction. Oh, it's not as bad. No, 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 no. Here's the quality picture. Zoom in. Right. See the reality. There's a, um, a, a problem that happens uh, over time when there's bad things happening is that we tend to get numb inside about these bad things. We, we get complacent with it. And so when the war broke out in February 24th, I mean, it was blown out all over the world. The whole world knew about what was going on. Um, and everybody was, you know, hearts were broken, people were, you know, uh, had compassion, you know, and they still do. But now the month uh, has gone on for more than two months. And there's kind of the news isn't really covering it much anymore, you know, it's not much of attention anymore. Oh, it's a thing. This back in, uh, you know, in Ukraine, it's not, you know, it's like, oh, I, I, you know, I heard a little bit about that, but it's nothing like what it was in the beginning. And yet we're still in the middle of this war. We still haven't defeated Russia. Uh, we've accomplished a lot against Russia, but the, it's, the atrocities are not finished. There's still Kyrgyzstan, there's still the whole southern part of Ukraine, all the way up over to Luhansk and, and Donetsk where it began, and, and Crimea. There's still that connection there that we need to break. We have to break the back on that, and, uh, and the people that are occupied in there are not safe because we already know what happens when Russia occupies that area. Uh, people are, are not safe, and their items are not, I mean, they're, 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 everything's getting stolen, um, you know, we know about rapes, we know about murders, uh, this is just their MO. Uh, I thought about this, you know, um, the atrocities of Russia. We're not talking, of, you know, the Soviet Union it was had a lot of countries involved in it. They were not Russia, they were their own country, but they, they were under communism. And they kind of had to bite their tongue and, you know, and kind of go along with the plan of communism, but they were not communism. So you've got Lithuania, you've got, you know, Poland, you've got uh, East Germany, you've got uh, Ukraine, you've got uh, many other countries that, and the stands, some of the stands and things that, you know, the, you know, Kazakhstan and things that were uh, communism. But inside, they were not communism. I mean, they were not Russia, excuse me. When communism busted, uh, it, those countries rose up and it sh and they showed their beauty they showed their kindness they showed who they were like ukraine is one of the kindest nations that you can be in it's, it's, it's just it's a safe country when you're when you're walking the streets at two o'clock in the morning in the middle of kiev you're not worried about gangs you're not worried about thing you're not worried about getting jumped on it's a safe place it's a safe city and a safe country and that but russia everywhere it went was murderous 
everywhere it went was murderous. We go back to Holodomor. That was murder. It was, what, seven to ten million people of just pure, slow murder over one to two year period. It was just, a, it was just you know, by gunpoint taking food away. You know, it was just, that's Russia. That's how sick they are. And so they don't do anything good anywhere. They didn't do anything good in Georgia, Bosnia, Afghanistan, Syria, and now Ukraine. They've done nothing good. They, 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 they glory in the destruction of buildings and watching buildings collapse and taking tanks and just, oh, let's just shoot our armors into the, into the buildings because we want to. Or how about on the video? Did you see that one video where the Russian tank, this old man was walking by, and they just blew the, with a tank. They shot a tank round at an old man walking in the street. That's on video. I mean, we saw that. You know, that's still going on, and that's, that's where we our plea. That's where we're, we're crying out. Uh, you know, we still need help. Now, we're thankful for the equipment that's coming in. The equipment has really offset the war, and this was beating Russia. Is that we're thankful for the U.S. and the equipment that's coming in from the U.K. and the equipment that's coming in and from Europe. And the, you know, the, the equipment that's coming in is, is helping us on that. And, and then my job to get these guys geared up and, you know, and, try, and train and so that they can protect themselves and protect the country. You know, and, and, and work to, you know, as a cohesive unit to be able to just crush the enemy and, and destroy the enemy. Uh, we don't want to spank them and send them out. No, we want to, you know, we want to crush them. But, uh, you know, Russia's history is horrible. Through, you know, and, and Putin's tenor is absolutely murderous. Absolutely murderous. Now, what you're doing, though, is absolutely phenomenal. And by the way, how do you get funded? Well, that's a, that's a difficult question. <laughs> we fund ourselves. So you're self-funded. Right. So we find the money for gas, if we can find the gas at the moment. Uh, we, um, all the logistics, food, it's, uh, all the equipment, it's, uh, it's ours. As I said, Insta is giving us another camera like this. Uh, they're sending shipping in. Mm -hmm. So there are companies that are helping us. Um, Yet we still need big need of the logistics and, and finances. And you need finances. Become, you need the right. funding to be able to get that. Uh, you wanted to create other teams, too, because right. this, this is a huge so project. We have so many volunteers that want to help. And that, that's why we requested more cameras, more quality cameras. Yes. So we, can so we need equipment. You need the funding. You need money for gas. Mm -hmm. The gas, uh, gas is kind of restricted in Kiev right now. We're known as shortage. You go outside of Kiev and it's a little bit easier to get gas. But right now the lines are very long. Uh, and like you said, sometimes you get there and they're not selling gas yep. uh, unless you have some kind of a, you know, um, coupon or something for it and stuff. So it's not easy to get gas. I know some of my friends who are driving, they're worried, too, because they're not able to get gas and it's going to you know, shut them down. Uh, but, yeah, so, again, it's a, a funding issues. And so in, in the world, you know, we ask or you ask how you can help. And the best ways to help is through finances. Or equipment, you know, the equipment. I don't know the equipment. He knows equipment. <laughs> he certainly can uh, give you, you know, a list of, of what he's looking for uh, on that. Uh, but the funds is that we make it available so that we, uh, with Andesite, uh, Andesite Care, which is a, a division of Andesite Blue, uh, when those funds come directly into our account, it's the same day we have available to give to these organizations to help and to to provide the money instantly for you. So the day that I the, the money is transferred into the account, the same day I can get to you, and the same day I can get to Yarmas, and the same day I can get to Akaritas. Uh, we need to buy a van for the 110th uh, Marine Brigade that's on the front over by Donetsk. Uh, they need one van, you know, to be able to transport these men in and, and you know to to insert and to extract the men in and out so that they can fight properly, you know. So. Uh, so funding is the best way to help. The funding is the best way that you can get involved and is greatly, I mean, Ukrainians are absolutely grateful people. I mean, they'll cook you borscht for a lifetime. And it's, borscht is very good. Uh, they, I mean, just, just the way the hearts are. You know, they're very grateful. They're very thankful people. And they're friends for life. You know, so that type, so by by just the donations and the help and and the money that we can raise for that to be able to get these these needs taken care of and uh, you know and people taken care of. I mean, because you know we all have to eat. You know, things like that. Uh, that's just the best way to do it. And so you know, part of this show is that is I I'm no, not really talking about business as much as I am uh, doing the uh, you know raising the funds so that we can get it to these 
uh, places we buy medical uh, equipment, supplies, medicine, uh, food, water. Water is, is, is huge. We definitely need to get water into a lot of these cities where people are just, uh, just dying of thirst, you know. Um, we have some uh, drivers that are actually hired, and I'm very thankful for them. Uh, I forget the organization, but they're here in Ukraine. They're contracted. These drivers are paid very well to go into the hotspots to bring out um, civilians, uh, like even Mariupol. They'll go into the Mariupol. And so these are, uh, these are sprinter vans, and the drivers are attached to these vans. They're paid. They're paid very well. They're kind of wired and geared to handle that kind of pressure. Of a, of a war situation. So um, they also take medicine to these places, they take water to these places. So we load the vans to go that way, then they load the people up to come out. Uh, and so there's all kinds of uh, opportunities uh, to help. I'm very thankful for them. They're actually, I believe they're out of Europe or maybe South Africa. I'm not sure where this, this company that is uh, sponsoring this um, for these vans, but there's about five or six of them uh, that are just, and that's what they're for. They're, they're, they're mainly humanitarian. So we get the food, water, medicine to these areas, and they bring out civilians. Um, but they will also say, hey, we need to get some military in there. They will load them up, take them in there, but then they're going to bring civilians out of those spots and stuff like that. So uh, I'm very thankful. But all of this, this is a huge logistics but of, of need, you know. And uh, when you look at the, you know, the U.S., U.K., Europe, Australia, Japan, uh, you know, Asia, uh, Africa, the many of the countries around, and, and you know South America and all that, to, that then they want to, they want to get involved and they want to help. They say, how can I? And you know, even just twenty dollars, you know, twenty dollars with a million people is twenty million dollars. You know, so it, it doesn't take much. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. People are getting used to the fact that something's happening. Uh, and the first days, we were getting text messages, phone calls every other minute mm -hmm. and uh, how can we help what can we do now the longer the war goes this it slows down the more it slows down but uh yet as you said the war is still here we, we do have to have a support um uh, that will help us to fight against russia to win this war and again to have everyone welcome to ukraine we ukrainians are very hospitable people. yes you come to my home you don't drink just your coffee. No, I'll, no. I'll, I'll feed you. <laughs> the and my the wife, spread on the table, my wife yes. Is, she's right here as well, but she is the best cook ever. I mean, she can, oh, she, she can feed you, and I, I can improve of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, uh, we do make a, a countable, uh, we are accountable for every dollar, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, we, we don't go and buy expensive things. We, don't, we just have to have the need of this. We get it, we do it, and we make sure that we share with the rest with people. Sometimes we're in a store, and we see the old grandma that's just buying half of the bread because all she has money that's for, all she has for yeah. then I mean, what can you do you take her bag you buy her some some more bread you know, some meat and then you pay for it and she cries but you yeah know, yeah this is someone's grandma someone's mother someone's uh, someone's uh, friend or part of the family and they're not able to be helped at the moment so mm -hmm. um Yes, we, we, we sometimes will get donations, but we share. We make sure that we spend every dollar correctly. It is, uh, the uh, money management among Ukrainians is pretty phenomenal. When you consider that the, uh, even before the war, that the average uh, salary was about $300 a month, uh, we could never live on that. We wouldn't know how to live on something like that. Um, it's really not that much, but they say that's the average. I mean, the pensions are lower than that. Much lower, yeah. Um, but, you know, so so when you take the, we're just talking the average, when you make a medium. Now, now I understand that Kiev uh, is, is a, a mega city, you know, and the income is on average higher, uh, but not much. I mean, it could be five or $600 a month. Um, you know, when we look at that, and, and, and like in America, I mean, that's just unlivable. Uh, free when you want to pay rent or pay utilities when it, uh, you know just a lot of expenses on there uh, so but the way the way Ukrainians look and live as if they are in a first world country of means because they, they dress nice they look good they have nice clothing they have designer bags they they've got designer shoes I mean they don't go out the house without looking good on the salaries that they have. They, uh, you know, they, they eat healthy. 
you know, they, uh, one thing about Ukrainian meals are smaller than American meals. <laughs> well, they're smaller, but they're more and more dishes. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying like right. when you go to restaurants, stuff like exactly. that, no, this, they call it American portions. Mm -hmm. Your plate is this big and your food is like this. Yeah, small, that's, big, grande. Theirs is, yeah, no, so it's, <laughs> it's just, it's a good, it, that's why the women look so good in Ukraine, okay? Yeah. They're, they're, they don't eat American portions. <laughs> right. So they don't eat the large, uh, large, large portions and stuff. But they don't do that because they're not, uh, they're broke. They do by, that by choice. And it's because of the family and the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we are so united. And this war has shown the world how united Ukraine is. That everyone who can help will help. Yes. Is, you know, we've been earning that three, five hundred dollars a month. Everyone will chip in. They'll still have a little extra to chip in. Exactly, yes. and the whole family will have a good meal. Yeah, exactly. Know, yeah. The family can support someone with, you know, with to buy a good clothes. Of course, they will take good care. It's not like you, you bought the shoes today, well, tomorrow I saw another pair of shoes, I'll buy another one. No, we we, we tend not to leave by the credit, by but the cash we have it on, exactly. on our Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's not a lot of credit cards. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, loans, you know, personal loans. Uh, you don't take seconds out on mortgages, you know, oh, to be able to get this. You you buy your car, you buy your flat, you know, you you buy everything, and so it is uh, up front, you right. know, and so there's no debt. And so uh, Ukraine has very, very, very little debt among uh, its the citizens and the uh, communities. Uh, but but you do work together to to get the things, and right. you do live, and you have nice, you know, really nice things, and that's always impressed me. So you're you're absolutely right. So um, and then, like you said, my my daughter, she's two years old, and she'll say babusa, mm -hmm. and uh, and then of course it's her grandma, you know. But it's such a cute way she says it, babusa, you know, and with a with a little tiny voice. But uh, they do. They're so thankful for any little amount, you know, that, that you can uh, provide for right. them, you know. So. Right. Um, and th that's just a great, a, a great feeling to be able to contribute and to be, you know, to help in that. So today I have uh, my military hat. Tomorrow I have my business hat. Uh, and it's just uh, kind of the different hats that I wear. Um, and then another day I'll have my volunteer hat, you know, where I'll get out there with the Yarmas or, you know, Caritas and help to, uh, you know, to, to unload trucks, to provide water, you know, and... Um, you know, to help finance some of the uh, people that uh, don't can't work now, mm -hmm. um, and they aren't able to go to the store, and so we'll put money on their card. You know, so they can have money for a week or so. You know, to extend them, and they can they can just they just that peace of mind. You know, it's one thing to get food for the day, but it's another thing when you can just kind of, kind of provide them. You know, for the week or the month. You know, and it just gives them a little bit more uh, peace of mind and and uh, to to help. So. Right. So that's 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 kind of what we're about here. Um, I, I, I want to touch a little bit on here uh, that we didn't talk a lot. Um, there's a lot of war crimes, mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure damage, right. a lot of uh, buildings that aren't being included in that cost. Mm -hmm. uh, the infrastructures they talk about have a lot to do with, you know, the roads, uh, you know, bridges, the things that affect uh, the country, but we have the individuals that aren't really being tallied into those costs. Individual homes, you know, being destroyed, apartment buildings that have to be demolished and rebuilt, uh, and things like that. Those, so we're at over 900 billion on infrastructure damage right now. We're reaching the tree and uh, damage on that from Russia. Just does not include the private sector. And so your cameras are going to be absorbing all of that, correct? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So as we, as we drive uh, through the villages or through the cities, we hit the most and yeah, the most um, destructed area, and we capture the information we pass to the government officials for them to um, uh, focus in on, the, on, the, on the picture, to see the details of the picture, and to report it to the prosecutor's office. So okay, so that's from the criminal as aspect, right? right. Okay. Uh, so, you know, one, one side, you show the reality to the world. So mm -hmm. Russians cannot lie, as they lie by your history. Everything, would be yeah. When you said. But when you look at the, at the history, in real history, you know, when Ukraine was founded, there was no Russia. When we had exactly. the first church, there was no Russia. When we had the first city, there was no Moscow. 
I mean, uh, the Russia itself is a combination of many, many, many countries that have gathered together and stolen the history. When you're talking about the Kazakhstan, you know, they said, mm -hmm. oh, it's a part of Russia. Well, it's not really. It's, they have their own language, their own culture, yes. their own history. Yes. You know, they, it's a totally different uh, nation. Like Ukraine, we are an independent nation with our own people and culture. So uh, one thing is to show the world that here's the real Ukraine, here's the, the, the damage they did. Another one is to collect evidence for the criminal cases for the future. Because the, the, the people will see that, okay, this house, this, you know, that the grandma owns uh, or used to own, completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. you know, and from, from that even site, you can see the estimate. How, how can you help her? You know, if just one window blow, bro broken down, it's not a big deal. Right. But there's, well, there's no walls or whatsoever, then it's, it's a problem. Yeah. And then this is what we, we were collecting. We also, as I said, we're flying drones from the above. And I did share your link. You can free to share the link with, okay. with, with the... Um, with the viewers uh, that will show from the above the destruction. In some places, you look down and you don't see even one house, nothing. That's, so yeah. this is that's what we are doing. You know, one is showing, and others collecting for the evidence for the crime. So um, okay, and that which is absolutely uh, necessary. You know, it's um, it's a, you know you're taking something that was beautiful that you did before with a passion, you're taking your passion now, but you're doing something that has, that has to happen. Right, you has know, to it's, happen. It's not, it's not fun. I mean, no. it probably breaks your heart. I imagine no, no. that your wife or you cry many times. Uh, the first day we, we drove the Irpin Bucha, you guys probably heard mm -hmm. about those names, it's all the news. Uh, we probably had not slept well the whole night. Yeah. And we couldn't, is we, you know, I thank God that we still have home to live, we still have food to eat. And because and we're still alive because those mm -hmm. people they do not have it yeah that's uh and it, it does it, you know it breaks your heart you know right. and, and when you're in the middle of it and you see all that happening uh i still have friends that are now in occupied territory mm -hmm. you know and they can't get out and they've already had uh, the russians come into their home and take uh, things out of their home you know and uh, fortunately at the time the russians came in and took out they weren't in there because they have a young daughter uh, 18 year old daughter with them in there and so like that and we just i was just i mean i'm texting i'm texting all the time you know how are you can i talk, talk to me when i don't hear back from him for a day it's like uh, please please just say something you know and say, well we're fine you know and it's like oh you know it just it gives you peace of mind you know when you hear just that that text we're fine you know that's uh and so um you know uh so there's just a lot of uh, things to do there's a lot of work to do um you're going to have a a huge thing on your hands uh, when this is over. I mean, it's already you have a lot of, on your plate that you're taking care of, but there's just going to be so much more to, to do, you know. Right. Like the next city we're going to go is Chernigov and then other places that are has been occupied before but now free from the Russians. Okay, yes. Uh, so we still get permissions. I mean, we do get permissions from the local authorities to enter and to capture. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that... Now, when, you know, um, when this is over, uh, you know, of course, there's going to be great partying in the streets and everybody's going to be rejoicing and there's going to be parades and there's going to be uh, confetti and all kinds of streamers in the air. I mean, we're going to, you know, the, the Kiev will be littered with uh, blue and yellow streamers all over everywhere. You know, we'll be happy to clean it up after it, we've littered right. it because it's going to be a great day of rejoicing to have that freedom. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, you know, Ukraine is a beautiful country. I mean, you know that you're taking all these videos. You've you got, you've just grown in this passion of going to these, like you said, these castles, this history, just the beauty of it. You go to the Carpathian Mountains, just the beauty there. You can go into the the valleys and the plains, you know, in in the middle and eastern part of Ukraine and the south towards the uh, seas. Everywhere. Yeah. So it's just yeah, everywhere you go, the Dnieper River just has so much to offer. Uh, it's just an entertainment for you know even sport and but it also just laying out and just the beauty and just enjoying. The smells this time of year are just absolutely yep. wonderful, uh, you know. And one thing about um, life, and when you, for example, fruit trees, we'll take a fruit tree as an example. Uh, if you just let a fruit tree go, the blooms and the fruit get less and worse. You have to prune the tree and to, to keep it in healthy and to keep it in shape. Every, when you do prune it, which is a kind of a painful process for a tree, what does it do? It bursts out in bloom, it bursts out in leaf and everything. 
the f- bloom, flowers are healthier and the fruit is bigger and healthier, tastes mm-hmm. better by grooming. Ukraine, when this is over, is going to flourish. I agree. This, and my belief, is that this is going to be the central point of tourism. Uh, just like in uh, Chernobyl, the, the TV show, the, the series that came out, Chernobyl, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that brought a lot of tourists to Chernobyl. <laughs> that brought a lot of tourists to Kiev and Ukraine, and they, and they all wanted to go to Chernobyl. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a, I mean, a, of a very negative thing and a negative, uh, uh, you know, evil that's happening to us right now. One thing, though, Ukraine will thrive and Ukraine is going to shine and its beauty is going to be seen around the world. Your cameras are going to be buzzing and busy and you're going to be showing and, you know, tourism is going to come back. It's going to be really the destination um, of what happened. They're going to want to know what happened. They're going to want to know the history. Of course, they're going to look, want to look at some of the, the cities that have been, have been damaged, but they're going to fall in love with actually the culture, the people, and the beauty. We're going to have the folk songs and the dances and the um, vishvankas, you know, that are wearing and, and all of the, just the, the, what do you call those things? Well, for the single women, anyway, you call those those things that they wear. Yeah, the, uh, okay. The, we, ha, it's over <laughs> in English. Uh, we call it vinochuk. Vodochik, mm-hmm. okay, you know, and just with the streamers on the right, back, you know, right. so it's just, just all of that f- enjoyment and beauty in there is just going to really uh, be nice. It's going to be a wonderful day when that time comes. I believe but, that will. But in the meantime, uh, you know, do what you, you know, the, the, the few dollars, you know, the, we give a few dollars here to help when we only have a few dollars, and just a few dollars around the world can make such a big difference, you know, in, in helping uh, to raise those funds and to support. Uh, Nikolai's uh, projects and his uh, his his private uh, enterprise that he's doing with this, um, and uh, you know through Yarmis that I had on here before, through supplying waters and food and clothing and medicines and uh, medical supplies, uh, to getting the vans through Caritas and all the just the organizations you know to that are helping the people that are actually hands on, you know literally getting their hands dirty into the into this and, and helping every individual that they possibly can. I'm here, I live in Kiev, uh, this is my home, and it gives me an opportunity to be hands-on and helping in any way that I can. Um, I appreciate um, Toloka Studios. I forgot to introduce in the beginning, <laughs> but Toloka Studios is our uh, producer uh, and it, it takes care of this uh, program, this show. I'm uh, very thankful for them, uh, you know, and they also uh, are a NGO. They work basically on volunteer and donations. And so you'll see at the bottom of the screen, you'll see uh, Toloka Studios and their phone and how you can donate uh, with, to them, support uh, Toloka Studios. And then you'll see my uh, Anasite Blue on there as well and to be able to donate directly there. The, uh, the funds come directly uh, to me so that I can get them directly to you and these places uh, that are much needed. So there's no bureaucracy. It goes directly to you. So um, that way uh, we don't have any delays. We get it right away. So thank you for taking the time to to watch. Uh, I really appreciate you all uh, and um, just your support and your help that you've given and the continual support and help that you give uh, for us in the future. So have a good evening and I will see you next week.